Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is magic. You old friend of yours, of everybody. Some might know me as magic, some might as the rebel, rebel Zeus. And I wanted to talk to people who, like myself, make coin rings. Now, this is an example. This is the ring that I wear most often. And as you can see, it is a patinaed 1947 Walking Liberty 50 cent piece. Now, you see a lot of videos that say how to make a coin ring, and they're all great. But now, now this is for the new people, for people thinking about getting a tour. For every ring like this one that you will make, starting out, you also have screw-ups. Take a case in point. That is a screw-up. You can't fix that. What causes it? You do not heat the ring and file enough times. Personally, I heat before I file, and then I heat a second time before I put it back on the stretcher. And since I've been doing that, only one coin has had any type of crack at all. So, you will, I guarantee you, when you start out, have coins that do that. I keep this as a reminder of what can happen. When you get done with a coin, you have to make the side straight. Now you might use a doming block like this or a custom uh, die there are some good places to buy those dies. They are not cheap. A good set will cost you between two and three hundred. You can get them either at Jason Works, and he has some very good dies. You can get them uh, at Coin Ring USA. They have good ones. You can also buy cheaper ones, but they're just as good, mind you. But the only difference is they're not made of steel. And you can get those at Skip King, and they are a polymer die. Um, in fact, I have one here. It's for coppers. And this is a polymer die that actually gives a little bit when you're using it, and one of the best I've ever used. Now, there's something else. Unless you invest right off, when you do a hole in a coin ring, or in a coin to make it into a ring, you're probably going to use a hammer and you're going to uh, take all this time finding the center of the ring. Now, if you're off on the center of the ring, that's, that's not good. Or that. That's also not good. Or this. And you might say, what's wrong with that? Well, look at it. Now this, this is a perfectly centered hole. Did I measure? No. Did I put a hammer, use a hammer and to, to do it? No. 
what I used was my press and that a self centering coin ring card. 50 cent pieces, dollar coin, golden dollar, as uh, CZB's quarters. You would take the quarter and you would put it in the right slot. And as you see, it's centered. Uh, I said this is one I already did. I don't have any that I haven't um, put a hole in. But it's perfectly centered. It lines up with that. The only place that I know of that you can get these, and they're about, but they're not all that expensive. I think the most expensive one is about $20 is through Skip King at Skip's Coin Rings on Etsy. He has these. He has these. Um, these are only, I think, 15. So you want to go, when it comes to certain custom stuff, Check out Skip, Skip King, Jason Works, and Coin Rings USA. I will put the links in the description of the video. Now, getting back to sent to the last step. The last step, of course, is to make the sides of the ring straight. Because even when you get it, all closed ring shape. The, the readed side of the coin will still be sticking out a little bit, it'll be flaring out. So you're going to straighten it out, straighten it out in the die. If that slips on you, that is what happens. Not pretty, is it? I keep stuff like that. You know, that's another view of that. I keep stuff like this to remind me to go slow. Um, and I said, for every screw up, and it's taken me over a year to be able to come up with these rings right there. These are the ones that are good enough to sale. And now see that's another thing with the coin cards, the extending cards. Even though these are for Pacific coins, take the ones that you buy with you to your coin shop. Every coin shop has a bargain bin. And test which of those foreign coins fits in the cards. You will find that the foreign coins that will fit in these cards, even though the cards are made for other ones specifically. I did that and one of the results was this Spanish coin. Uh, it's a I think this was a 50 Peters coin. Um, this was a Chile coin that fit here in the uh, coin, the center code. 
So they think, well, you know, I, I want to do more than just U.S. coins. So why should I buy those? Well, these will will work with almost any coins. You just got to get a set of these and take them with you to the coin shop. Go through the bargain bin. And you'll, you'll be able to fit, test fit them and see which ones will fit. Then keep a journal of that. So when you go back to the coin shop, you don't have to take the center cards with you because you know already what coins fit in it. That's what I do. And... I'm not saying it isn't possible to to do coins, say, like that. This is a golden dollar coin without it. But these things make life a whole lot easier, man. Don't work hard, work easy. In other words, don't do it the hard way when you can find easier ways of doing it and better ways, faster ways. And another thing, um, let's see, where is it? This is a Philippine one peso. Okay, this thing fits in the quarter hole. Put in there, it centers it, and you make your ring. So you see, work smarter. Yeah, you, you see the videos, and you might be put off. You may have already tried doing it and have gotten some of these really screwed up results. But you're doing it the hard way. Do it the better way. Don't uh, um, don't um, make work harder for yourself. Look, uh, and, and that's nothing. Adam McSkinney has a tutorial it's entitled Best, Better, um, Good, Better, Best, whatever, I think. Uh, beginner, intermediate, expert level. And it shows you, okay, if you're going to do the hammer and all like that method and having on the mandrel you're going to get these results if you're going to do that plus use a press you'll get these results but if you use only the presses and the dies and the coin charging cards you'll make the most beautiful rings you've ever saw in a fraction of the time you will still occasionally, you won't be off center anymore if you use the coin cards. Coin cards, you will make perfectly centered coins. But that doesn't mean you still may not occasionally run into that. Okay? There's no tool that I know of, they can necessarily stop you from doing this. You have, and I said, if you're getting rings like this, you're not filing and annealing enough, especially annealing. So, <clears throat> what have we learned, boys and girls? We have learned that if you're going to if you're going to do this on a 
serious basis. If you're going to make a living at it, or if you want to just create those perfect gifts for birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, then you have to think, um, use use your knowledge, use uh, pick other people's minds. Most people that do this, like myself, are willing to answer any questions people have. And that's nothing. Join groups like uh, Coin Ring Crafters uh, uh, here on Facebook, and you'll find that everybody in the community is willing to share their experiences. Get custom tools, like from Skip King, from Jason Works, from Coin Ring USA. Uh, Jason Works now has co uh, cones that replace the um, Delrin balls. And I, I have not ordered any yet. He just came out with them uh, during Christmas, which means I'm broke. When you, want, when you still got kids at home, uh, you, uh, Christmas time, yeah, you know. So, <coughs> but I do plan to order some of them, at least one or two at the moment, come next month, hopefully, to try them out. So, um, work easier, not harder, that's what I've been, been trying to say. So this is... Magic at standing Bitcoin rings and other things. And hopefully I can, in the coming months, do more, do actual tutorials. I'll put my two cents in on that. And uh, come back, watch, learn. If you have questions, let me know. I, if I can answer them, I will. So, until next time. Keep on ringing those coins. Bye-bye. We gone. Till next time.